One thing that you may not know about me if you've been around the channel long, especially given that I talk a lot about clutter-free living and productivity and simplifying tips, is that I'm actually pretty lazy. Between the busy squirrel and the lazy dog, I definitely veer more toward the pup. I've come to embrace this about myself and find ways to still get the results that I want without having to devote more energy or be more productive necessarily all the time in order to get those results. So today I'm gonna to be sharing my top 15 hacks for lazy decluttering, or in some cases, just lazy clutter-free living for people like myself who embrace a little bit of laziness. Hey everybody, I'm Mia Danielle and I chat all about holistic and clutter-free spaces. So if that's something you're into, be sure to click subscribe and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every Tuesday. Now, some of you may already know because that may be how you're watching this video right now, but this year I'm gonna be a speaker in the Get Organized HQ Virtual Summit. This is by far the biggest organization virtual hoopla event of the year. There are gonna be over 100 speakers there, myself included, talking all about ways to simplify, streamline, organize, and declutter your home and your life. If you have not registered already, you can do so down in my description. The summit will be live from September 12th through the 16th, but registration just opened yesterday on August 24th. So you can save your spot. It's totally free and I hope to see you there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into my top 15 hacks for lazy decluttering. Hack number one is to focus on the space over the stuff. When you're focusing on the things that you're decluttering and all of the stuff that you own, it can be really overwhelming and even paralyzing to your progress. However, when you focus on the space, decide your spatial constraints, decide how much space you're gonna allow for each category of items. It not only makes the decluttering process easier because you're more easily able to eliminate, but it just makes things look nicer and more organized. This saves you a ton of drained energy on going through each individual item and deciding if it's worth keeping, if it's not worth keeping, where you're gonna put it. Start with the space, work from there, and makes the process so much smoother. Hmm, let's see. I think that this shelf would be great for holding some of my smaller board games. So it doesn't even matter which games I choose, right? I already have the space. Number two, and one of my favorite methods for keeping things easily clutter-free and really just collecting data and letting the data do all the work is something I call heat mapping. And this is great because you can do it everywhere. I think the easiest way to showcase this is with bathroom products. So literally all you have to do is put everything into one pile. Voila. And then as you use something, you're going to set it off and start a new grouping off to the side. So if I use this, setting it off to the side, setting it off to the side, and so on. Set a reminder on your phone for a week down the line, a month down the line, however much time you wanna give yourself to reasonably assess how you're using your things. And then at the end, you can go in and just scoop up the things that you're not actually using. You can heat map your closet using the old hanger trick. Just turn around the hangers of the clothes that you've already worn and come back later to collect the data. You can even do it with seasonings and spices. Just as you use something, you're gonna set it off to the side. Number three is to keep an ongoing donation bag or box. We've been doing this for years and it makes it so much easier than thinking, well, I need to make a special trip to the donation center. Just keep an ongoing bag and toss things in it as you need to without really thinking about it. We actually keep two. We have one that's for general donations and then we have one that just stores electronics and cords that we would take to either Goodwill or to Best Buy. Number four is to utilize slow organic decluttering. This essentially means when you're already going somewhere, just take something with you or declutter something in that process. You don't have to make a whole special event or a special trip in order to get something decluttered or put away. So if I'm already going to the garage, that might be a great time to take these things that need to go to the garage along with me. Number five is to work in modes. So when I say work in modes, I'm talking about either working by category or by task. This eliminates context switching, which is what we call 
multitasking. Although multitasking isn't really a thing because you're not really able to focus all of your energy and attention on multiple things at once. Trying to do so greatly decreases your efficiency. So when we're talking about lazy decluttering, you wanna maintain as much time and energy and efficiency as possible. When you operate by working in modes, focusing on one category at a time or one similar task at a time, it makes the process effortless. That could be going through all of the clothing items and all of your accessories, or it could be going through all of the dishes, or if you're operating by tasks, it could be doing all of your digitizing projects all at once, or posting all of the things that you're wanting to try to sell all at once. It chunks down the projects to make them more manageable so they're not having to take up so much of your time, and it again, conserves your energy. Do you like doing dishes? Neither do I. <laughs> That's why number six is to use a water bottle. I require everybody in my family, in fact, to have and use a water bottle. And this is extra lazy friendly because then you have the added benefit of not having to get up and go to the kitchen, which in our case is downstairs, every time you want a drink, you've got something right by your bed. But also it saves on so many dishes, you know, like when people come to get a drink and they're using cups, oftentimes if they forgot the cup in the other room, they're grabbing a new cup, they get a new drink, they grab a new cup. And then before you know it, you just have cups spread throughout the house. Having a water bottle cuts down on so much visual clutter in your space. If you've been here long, you know that I live by water bottles. They're like in the background of tons of my videos. I'm constantly drinking water. It's great for you. Number seven is to use a disbursement box or bin. I did this recently. I actually had like three bins going whenever I decluttered both of our bedside tables. And essentially it was just a place to put everything so that I could select the things that I wanted to keep and then disperse the rest of the things throughout the house. And if I didn't want to do it immediately, that was okay. Actually, I didn't do it immediately. It took me a couple of days to go through it, but it kept everything in one convenient location and it made it easy. So it's super lazy friendly. Number eight, leave the shoes at the door. Number nine is to have a blanket bin. It's so easy, so simple, and you don't have to worry about how many throw blankets or throw pillows you have. All you have to worry about, again, is the space. So how much space do you have in your blanket bin? If you have a lot of blankets and you feel like a larger bin is gonna look nice inside of your space, then by all means, you can do like I did and go a little bit large with your blanket bin and literally just throw them all in. Sometimes you don't even have to fold them because nobody can really tell. Number 10, invest in a RoboVac. I use mine every single day. Number 11 is to remove unnecessary furniture. All of the furniture that you're holding on to that was handed down or that you think is too valuable to let go of may actually be the downfall of your living space. You'll notice in my living room, we don't even have a coffee table. We just have a small round mobile table and that's intentional because we prefer having space to be able to walk around and use the floor space to play or stretch or exercise. And also we don't want the extra surfaces that feel like you need to put something on them. Number 12 is to organize later or less or not at all. You'll notice that we use no intricate organization system inside of our space. There are no color-coded tabs or plastic sorters. This is what we have. This is where we store our electronics. This is how we store our food. And this is how we store all of our papers and documents. Number 13 is kind of an organization and decluttering hack in one, and that is to use Velcro strips. I have fallen in love with these things. A lot of times they come with the cords themselves, but you can purchase them really cheaply on Amazon as well. And they take your cords from being just a big heaping nest of a cord to this. It's simpler, it's like super lazy friendly because if you need a cord, you can more easily find it. And they are just so easy to use. Number 14 is the easiest, but probably also the most overlooked. And that is to reduce the resistance. There is nothing more lazy friendly than not having so much to struggle against and to work against. And by this, I mean your mindset in most cases, but also planning can be huge. Having a plan before you dive in is gonna make the process just move more smoothly, more quickly. You're gonna waste less time and energy and getting your mind in the right place makes such a huge difference. Like you can literally lay in bed, 
listen to a meditation or just think happy thoughts about the project that you're about to do. Because when you go into a project, whether it is decluttering or organizing or just taking a small action in general, and you're thinking about it as being some mammoth of a project, like something that's gonna be stressful and overwhelming, it just makes it to where you don't wanna do it. And in most cases, that leads to procrastination, which leads to inaction. And so probably the most lazy friendly thing that you can do is to take time to make sure that your mind is on board Board and feeling positive and uplifted about whatever types of actions you're wanting to take inside of your home before you even start. You're gonna notice that there's less resistance, you enjoy the process more so you're able to get more done in less time because you're not like dragging your feet and setting things here and then waiting a few minutes, you know what I mean? Like when you're really resisting some kind of an action, it takes a lot more energy and a lot more time. So just take the time to adopt a breezy mindset. And number 15 is to get an accountability buddy or an outside force. If you know that you have lazy tendencies, then you should know not to always rely on your own motivation <laughs> to get things done. And I can't tell you how many things, I would say at least 50% of the projects that we've taken care of around here would have been lazied out, like noped out, had I not had Matt here and vice versa, like to keep each other accountable. We recently went down and decluttered the garage and it was like essentially both of us sitting in our bedroom and me saying, today is the day we need to go down and redo the garage and then just walking down together and doing it. Now, had I said that to myself alone, I may not have gotten up and gone down to take action on that. And had he been alone, it may have taken another year or two before the garage actually got tended to. So sometimes just having that extra person to kind of share the weight or the resistance, or if you don't have another person who lives with you or who's super convenient to have as an accountability buddy, then some kind of outside force. So that could be having a donation truck come on a certain day so that you have a little bit of outside accountability or joining a Facebook group of other people who are going through the same thing and getting some accountability that way. Or if you're just really good with alarms and reminders and repetition, then doing something like that, but relying on something other than how you feel in the moment is huge. Thank you for joining me today for my top 15 hacks for lazy decluttering or lazy clutter-free living. If you enjoy this, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more holistic and clutter-free space ideas. Also, don't forget to register for the free live summit of the Get Organized HQ virtual event that's gonna be happening September 12th through the 16th. I'll catch you next week.